In community music practice, how do we know what we know? Where is knowing located and what constitutes knowing? In your practice, what knowing do you draw on to inform the choices you make? For those working as music facilitators or leaders, for example, how do you decide whether to develop a musical process with a given group or not? Or to lead an activity that might raise the energy of a group in a given moment? or to work from a particular musical starting point. The location of knowing in community music practice is an epistemological question that requires our attention. If we know how we know, where knowing is located and what constitutes it, we can make informed methodological choices, choices that fit the practice that is to be inquired. There are many ways of knowing, like there are many ways of community music. I propose that the community musicians doing knowing is a relevant and important aspect of knowing in community music practices and can support a depth of systematic reflective practice with potential to understand from within. But just what is the community musicians doing knowing? Robin Nelson, a leading exponent of practice as research, explains that we do knowledge, we don't just think it. Take, for example, a person's knowledge of how to ride a bike. As Nelson explains, this is practical knowledge, that of know-how, since to know how to ride a bike is to ride it. The tacit and embodied knowledge of, for example, how to balance, or how much force to exert from your body to the pedals, offers a simple instance of knowing in doing. The musician's knowing might equally be understood as offering a clear example of knowing acquired through doing. One might say, to know how to play an instrument is to play it, or to know how to make music is to make it. Drawing on philosopher Donald Chern's outlining of knowledge in practice, Nelson advocates doing knowing to describe the practitioner's tacit embodied and experiential know-how. As a performing art, the musician's knowing is embodied, inactive, embedded and extended. Musicians gain their knowledge of how to play an instrument, play in a group or improvise, for example, through the incremental and iterative experiencing of playing an instrument, playing in a group and improvising. As Schoen explains, our knowing is ordinarily tacit, implicit in our patterns of action and in our feel for the stuff with which we are dealing. It seems right to say that our knowing is in our action. And for musicians, the feel for the stuff, for example, the touch of the strings on a guitar, the felt vibrations of reverberant sound in a room, or the feeling of connection as you play with others in an ensemble is of particular significance. The corporality of music making, the quality of it being a bodily experience as sounds are made with the voice, the hands, the feet, gives emphasis to knowing in doing and foregrounds subjectivity since the embodied knowing of the music maker is situated and enacted in relation to others. The community musician's knowing also includes the embodied and tacit knowledge of what might be referred to as reading the room, balancing the pace of creative collaborative activities undertaken in a workshop, their bodily position in the context of the ensemble as they lead from within or up front, or their tacit awareness towards individual and group dynamics, and as practitioners of a situated practice that is operationalized through active music making with others, the community musician's knowing is gained through and embedded in doing. However, here I caution that to recognize the community musician's doing knowing is not to forget that such knowing is constituted in relation. It is in the moment of interaction, the music making, dialogue and rapport between community musicians and those they make music with, that the work is done and knowing is developed. I also caution that this is not to feed into a simplistic binary between doing and knowing, or from this practice and theory. Doing knowing is offered together, as a hyphenated word to highlight that doing and knowing are imbricated. As Schoen suggests, each feeds the other and each sets boundaries for the other. Continuity of inquiry entails a continual interweaving of thinking and doing.
Whilst the community musicians doing knowing is a relevant and important aspect of knowing in community music practices, this type of knowing is often locked within the practitioner. We often know more than we can tell. So how can the tacit be made explicit? And what are the purposes for doing so? I'll start with some purposes. Moving from the tacit to the explicit brings scope to disseminate, to share ideas and understandings with others that are often locked within the practitioner. And through this process of sharing, new insights might arise as others can engage with the practice and its associated ideas, values and assumptions. It can also support the practitioner to consider their practice in different ways, through a process of critical reflection required to move from know-how to know-what, which I will discuss later through Nelson's multi-mode epistemological model for inquiry. And now, moving on to how we might go about this. From the standpoint that knowing in community music practice can reside in the community musicians doing knowing, practice research offers an advantageous framework for community music inquiry since it can tap into the knowledge producing potential of the active doings of community music. Practice as research is an approach to research whereby practice is a central method of inquiry. As an established methodology within arts inquiry, it builds on recognition that theory is implicated within practice and that creative practice can constitute knowing. Again, we do knowledge, we don't just think it. An inquiry implicated in practice might include a practice-related output, a practical project as an element of a research process drawing on a range of methods, or a research process entirely framed as artistic practice. Community musician Kathleen Turner, for example, shows how song can be a powerful dissemination tool to share research findings, for want of a better word, and uses the songwriting process as a site of exploration in inquiry, which she discusses in her video entitled Arts Practice Research, Exploring the Identity of the Community Musician Through Song and Story, which was made for this series. As a methodological approach for research through creative practice that emphasises theory implicated within practice, knowledge as a matter of doing, and practitioner know-how, I suggest that practice as research offers a fitting framework for community music inquiry. After all, community music is a creative practice, and for UK community music activity, for example, the practitioner's doing has been at the fore of this creative practice with focus given to supporting access to music for all through active making music with groups and individuals. Furthermore, since community music is a situated practice, know-how resides in doing precisely because the work is about musical and social interaction in a given moment. In one sense, reflective practitioners might already understand their work in terms of research. However, as I have discussed, knowing gleaned through this process is often locked within the practitioner. Furthermore, having moved from professional practitioner to practitioner researcher through PhD study, I suggest that reflection of this kind seldom extends the self or technique and is often undertaken in the manner of what Schoen terms technical rationality, whereby professional practice is a process of problem solving and emphasis on problem solving ignores the problem setting. As Schippers points out, although many musical practices involve research, this does not necessarily qualify all music making as research. Research requires a depth of inquiry leading to new insights that can be shared, which rigorous reflection through practice as research can support. As a final comment in this section, I think it's important to acknowledge that there are many names to describe research inquiry implicated in practice, which reflects nuances of approach, aims and processes. You might, for example, hear the terms arts-based research, artistic inquiry, practice-based, practice-led, and there are many more. I use the term practice as research at this moment in time to echo that practice can constitute research, to highlight the possibility of its centrality to inquiry and as an attestation to doing knowing. Also, I suggest that practice as research might be both timely and empowering for community musicians. Empowering since as, 
being a preposition, comparator and quality, affirms that the practice community musicians undertake can constitute research rather than research being some kind of disconnected commentary or at worst outside interrupter. A research journey towards knowing in community music may be strengthened through a multi-mode approach and dynamic interplay between know-how, know-what and know-that. Nelson outlines the relationship between these modes of knowing through his multi-mode epistemological model for practices research. Know-how is described as a tacit, often embodied doing knowing, and it can be considered as processual knowledge gained through experience. Know-how is the type of knowing that I refer to in my discussion of the community musicians doing knowing. Know what? is derivative from know-how through practitioner critical reflection. Subsequently, know-what might be understood as explicit knowledge gleaned from know-how. Know-that is considered as equivalent of traditional academic knowledge. It is propositional in nature and presents knowledge in explicit and reified forms. Nelson advocates a multi-mode inquiry for practices research since knowing is a continuing process of negotiation between the varying modes. Note here that Nelson uses the term knowing rather than knowledge. This is to indicate that knowing is understood as a process. Knowing of this sort is unfixed, unfolding and unfinished and contrasts notions of hard or unquestionable facts widely associated with the positivist paradigm, for example. The community musicians' practice is often articulated as a process as they practice, reflect, refine and practice again. Through a practices research strategy, this process can be built on with deeper contextualization, methodological grounding and effective dissemination as they develop their knowing through dynamic interplay between know-how, know-what and know-that. Whilst it is beyond the scope of this video to give a full account of the radical reappraising of knowledge paradigms that practices research brings to the fore, I think it is important to mention Donna Haraway's God trick here. In challenge to the belief that hard data and unquestionable facts exist somewhere out there to be found by neutral observers, with the God trick, Haraway asserts that there is no view from nowhere. Knowledge comes from a knower. Subsequently, power dynamics must be recognised in the research and researchers need to be attentive to the context of discovery, not only the context of justification. I mention this because the community musicians doing knowing brings subjectivity to the fore because such knowing is constituted in relation. It comes about through musical and social interaction with others in a given context. To draw to a close, the community musicians doing knowing offers an important aspect of knowing in community music practice and practices research offers a relevant methodology to explore this. Researching in this way can be considered as an ethical approach whereby the community musicians doing, the magic so often discussed as an integral part and result of practice and also what is done to, with, for, alongside individuals and groups that take part is critically considered through situated inquiry. Through community music practices research, practitioners can turn to their work, which has scope to address and often express concern that research is at distance from practice. This in turn might open practice to research that has not yet been considered and may lead to new insights. Consequently, it can support continued professional development as practitioner researchers build on their reflective practice through deeper contextualization, methodological grounding and effective dissemination. It can build on attributes that creative practice offers inquiry such as innovation, disruption, change and embodiment by adding attributes of community music such as emphasis on care, dialogue, inclusion and diversity. Furthermore, in doing so, it offers an approach to inquiry with potential for practical change and transformational learning, rather than just becoming a topic of inquiry. It can also contribute to new modes of dissemination, akin to the principles of community music. And it can support research without changing working practices with participants. <laughs>